But uh, again, I want to talk about guerrilla pastors here, man. And I wanted to uh, ask you, let the people know why you decided to do this, man. Because here's the thing. You told me the story about what yeah. you know, your situation was. I, I really want them to know like why you decided to pursue this dream and pursue this passion right. of yours. Cause you know, they don't know the story of a, you know, a Minneapolis kid uh, decided to go, you know, start a farm out in the, you know, right. subs. Yeah, man. Um, essentially, you know, if anybody knows me and knows my history, you know, I used to compete in competitive bodybuilding, you know, I fought Muay Thai, not in MMA, but Muay Thai yeah. uh, just once, you know, um, I've always been a very health conscious individual uh, and I've always, you know, dealt in that realm. You know, I've always, you know, I went to school for physical education. Um, that was always my world. And now that as an older adult, as an older adult, like I just realized that and af after accomplishing everything that I've accomplished in bodybuilding and everything else, like I just realized and I don't care. If I, I I don't care if I bench press 500 pounds anymore. I bet that's no longer. It's anymore. gone. It's done. I want to get up in the morning, feel good, and be able to stretch my legs and still be, you know, still be able to walk around and, and uh, move well. Um, and so, you know, it's it's important uh, that I eat the right food, um, you know, and it's important that I have access to the right food. Uh, and so that's become a big part of my health journey. You know, it's no longer about lifting weights or beating people up in the gym or anything like that. You know, let's be honest, I never beat anybody up in the gym. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, but yeah, so it's, it, you know, my health journey has taken me here to, to potentially producing my own organic uh, uh, food. Um, you know, growing up in Minneapolis in a low income household, I didn't always have access to that. And I'm trying to change that by, um, by encouraging other people in, in the city to grow food. So, to, so creating gorilla pastures, you know, is an opportunity for me to teach classes on how to grow food. Um, and so you're maybe teaching classes at gorilla pastures too. That that will eventually be the goal. You okay. Know, cool. want awesome. to promote, we want to promote urban poultry, right? You know, yeah. they always talk about urban. Yeah. They always talk about urban agriculture and growing your own greens and yada yada, right? Uh, but I think one of the, one of the big components to the ecosystem that they're missing is the animal, right? Um, animals uh, play a vital role in all ecosystems. Yeah. Uh, so, so real animals, quick, talking yep. about uh, animals. Okay. So you, uh, I, I know you told the, me the story already, but I, I want you to tell it to the, you know. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so you're living in Minneapolis, right? Yep. And I see. So I'm watching you, and then I see this. This, this when you were in Minneapolis, you post yep. up the picture, and that you have your garden going. But then I see chickens, and yeah. your, in your picture. So, and, yeah. but I'm like, this dude lives in the middle of Minneapolis literally and he has some chickens in his backyard how did yeah. you find out that you could have like owned a chicken in minneapolis um at the time i have to be honest like i was in brooklyn center uh, okay but they, it was illegal actually <laughs> and, um, it was illegal to own a chicken and so i you know i hit it and i still hit it uh, even after they passed it uh, but at the same time, there was a movement going on, you know, not ran by me, so I can't take any of the credit for it. But uh, there was a movement for people to push uh, uh, raising chickens in the city. Um, and I was I supported that. Uh, once they got that pass, I, I brought chickens in or more chickens in more chickens than I was supposed to have. Oh, OK, <laughs> uh, they allowed six chickens and I probably had about 20 laying. Yeah, I had about 20 laying hands, but which worked out because, you know, I was garden. I, I, I tilled my whole front yard, turned that into a garden. Every every fall and spring, I took my chicken manure um, that that has built up in the chicken coop, threw it over my chick or threw it over my garden um, to fertilize the soil. So I had really great soil. All of my extra greens that I didn't eat 
was was thrown back to my chickens so my chickens ate that so it became this um you know a this kind of revolving circle of life circle kind of. of life you know essentially yeah. and uh my chickens fed me through eggs i fed the chickens through my garden and they also fed my my garden uh via their uh their poop and pee you know their manure um <laughs> So it, it was like this great harmonious deal. It was it was really fun, but uh, you know, it was, uh, I wanted to, I want to teach other people how to do that, um, and I wanted to scale up and produce and have more chickens, and then also have more chickens with without the fear of potentially the city knocking on my door and saying, "Hey, that's what I was gonna get to." Yeah, that's what I wanted to get to. So, what was the time for you where you finally said okay i gotta get out of here and i gotta go and 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 do this somewhere yeah. else where i can do this and not be in trouble yeah i've always wanted to i've always wanted to what i had to wait for was wait i had to wait for uh till i develop a strong enough business plan to come out here and i've developed enough knowledge to come out here and scale up what i was trying to do Right, because yeah, I know chickens. I know a little bit about gardening. I know about um, composting. Right? Yeah. Uh, was do I know enough about it to the point where I can come out here and scale it, and then do the numbers work out? Right? Financially, can I come out here? Uh, do I make enough money? And can I? And will I eventually be able to make enough money on this farm here, teaching classes, selling meat? selling eggs, uh, you know, selling honey and whatever else that I will be producing out here um, to be sustainable, right? Yes. Uh, and so essentially, you know, my wife's not into it um, at all. <laughs> my wife is 100% not into it. She's a total city girl. And, um, you know, I had to come out with a business proposal to her and show her that the numbers do work out and that uh, I you know, that I wasn't just coming out here to like mess around and that I have a solid game plan. So uh, we moved out here to Oak Grove and I have about five years to make this, to make, uh, this happen, that, right? to make this thing work out financially until, and I told my wife that, um, you know, we're going to chase this dream and try to make this work. Right, and if, right. if it doesn't work out, I, we just move back into the city and, and do continue doing what we're doing. Um, so she has been great about that. And, you know, I have so, have so much to be grateful for her for allowing me to, to do this and to chase after a dream and a passion of mine. It's, you know, a lot of people think it's, it's crazy, but I, you think, know, it's crazy. I think it's, yeah, crazy. but you know what? You and their brother. But, but yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, man, I used to stand on stage in a, in a thong oiled up and, and tanned, right. Exactly. And, and flex for people. Right. So, yeah. um, you know, I, I, I guess I'm just built like that. I mean, I just do things a little bit differently and I do what I want and I, 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 I go after it. So now, so now, now the, the idea started, you put a plan in, now you yeah. started the plan. Now the yeah. plan is moving. Yeah. For 2021, like, do you, what do you foresee for Gorilla Pastures? So in I've I've just That's ordered my first, yeah yeah so I just ordered my first hundred birds okay, coming yes yep um in April I have to build a barn All right um, yep. that's gonna be like a twenty by forty barn uh, and then once that barn is built by June the idea is that I bring in cows I bring in honeybees uh, hopefully out of that barn. I can start teaching classes and start producing birds, uh, start processing birds in my, uh, on my farm here. Um, in 2021, I just hope to, you know, get my name out there and I just hope that, uh, yeah, I just hope to get it going. I don't, you know, I'm not looking to turn a profit quite yet. Um, you know, I've got five years to do that and I understand that. So I'm, I'm taking my time and I just want to make sure I do things right. I'm not trying to rush anything and go crazy quite yet. Uh, I want to keep my wife happy, keep her sane. So, <laughs> um, and uh, I've got a two-year-old kid. 
And so I, you know, I, I want to take my time and, and not just for me, but, and I show her um, that, you know, life is more than just nine to five, right? You come out here and you do some dreams. And um, exactly. you know, I, I want to be a set a good example for her, you know, um, and to not give up on your dreams. And that if there's something you're passionate about uh, and that you've thought things through, through and through and, you know, definitely pursue it and, and, and chase after it. Um, and then out here, there's a lot of learning opportunities for her. You know, every morning we go out in the morning and pick eggs together. Um, you know, in the spring, when I do get the chickens, we'll go out there and feed the chickens together. Right now I have my, my laying hens and, and she she's comes fearless, out. right? Yeah, she's fearless. You know, um, I, I've got two cows that are at a buddy's house right now. He's got the housing for it and she's visited them and she enjoyed them rode their rode their wow. horses too so which which has been really cool that's um cool dude that's yeah so it's just, it, 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 this this is uh this is my dream but this is definitely for her too i, I want to hope i want to be able to teach her an important lesson and doing what you want and and kind of you know pers pursuing this non-traditional life right yeah I think you, you and me are the same age. And I think uh, first generation college graduates, you know, we, we were sold this dream and this idea that if we went to school, we'd get this great job and we'd be happy. And, you know, I think this working in a nine to five is fine, but it's, 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 it's not for me. Yeah. Um, and that's why I'm out here trying to make this work now. Uh, so I did, I did, I did leave a, a, a pretty nice job uh, to, to potentially pursue this or to pursue this. And, um, you know, it's, 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 it sounds crazy, but I, I just think, I, I, I think the world, you know, I can't, I, I just don't see myself in a nine to five. And if I, I would be upset as, at myself as a parent, if I just groomed my child to be a nine to five drone, yeah. you know, a, you know, a button pusher, you know? Exactly. Uh, and so I wanted to give her teacher business, teacher about the world, teacher about um, taking care of her, her family, taking care of uh, what's her and uh, what's hers and wanted to actually own some stuff so that I could pass on to her someday. And, you know, the plan is that, um, you know, I always see her, you know, how they have like the little kids will have like lemonade stands on the side of the yeah. road. I can see that, um, too. Yeah. I so see that, too. My, right, my in front of your house, right in front of your house. Yeah, as as my plan for her is to have like a, a chicken, like a, a egg stand, you know, where she could be on the side of the road hustling, uh, <laughs> egg, you know, and, um, you know, where she can do her own inventory work to you know and work out the finances herself at a young age and kind of be a, a teacher how to be a young entrepreneur herself yeah uh, and is there's so many opportunities for that out here and let me know, let me ask you that's this what i'm out here doing let me ask you this man uh, it's an inspirational story uh especially for me you know coming when you told me your story and what you are going through and what you want to accomplish at least you want to try to at least per se you want to pursue this once in your life yeah. Do you now on a way to doing this? Do you miss what you uh, left behind? No. No. <laughs> no, no. Not at all. I'm telling you, like you know, and um, it has its ups and its downs. You know, and a there's slow times. Does your wife? Paper. Does my wife miss it? Yeah. She, you know, out here is a is a further commute to her her job. But because of COVID, she's working from home right now. So it just kind of worked out really nicely. Really good too, right? Yeah. And so, you know, as much as I would hate for uh, the pandemic to continue, I would love for her to continue working from home. <laughs> um, it, it helps you. It gives you the time to do what you Yeah, do Yeah. And it stays, well, right? stays on daycare. You know, I'm not, we're, we're not struggling to pay for daycare or do anything like that. Of course, the goal out here is to... Um, have the the farm be financially sustainable 
so much so that I can, or enough so that I can uh, be a stay at home father and work from home as, you know, as a farmer. Wow, wow, wow. From bodybuilder to Muay Thai fighter yeah. and now to, uh, did you, I think you even did like, uh, like suits too for a little bit, shoes? Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I just, I, everything that I get myself involved in. Yeah. I just put it, I just go at it a hundred percent. So for a while there, I got into um, fashion and uh, we were working on our own blog. I uh, mean, and so everything that I do, you know, I just don't, I, I don't believe in doing it half ass. And then I, I look for an opportunity to, um, you know, potentially make some kind of like financial gain out of it. What?